Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, COABE's Student Ambassador Training, Empowering Learners to Be Leaders. Today's webinar is generously sponsored by Essential Education, and today we have Dan Griffin, who's going to share a few words with us. Dan? Thanks, James. Appreciate it. Let me uh, get the right share screen button going here, and hopefully that'll come up. Good. Uh, welcome everybody. We're always excited to be able to work with COE. What a great organization and uh, the work they're doing in adult education is just phenomenal. So we are always appreciative of the opportunity to sponsor these webinars and uh, work with them in a variety of different ways from the COE journal that we sponsor to the um, uh, conference and uh, repository. We have a lot of, a lot of things going on. So we appreciate all their efforts in uh, supporting you and, and working with us. Um, today's an exciting day. I just have to mention for those of you who might be in Western states and work with us that have worked with uh, Carol Holdsworth before. She just had her first baby last night. So we just uh, welcomed a new member of the Essential Ed <laughs> team at 1.42 a.m. Little Cooper drive safely. So we're excited as a company to have, uh, have her get through that and everybody be safe. Um, just a couple of things we want to talk about uh, today, is, especially as it relates to students. Um, you know, our core mission is really at helping students, and we love being able to work with teachers and educators and directors across the country, but at the very core of what we do is about changing people's lives and helping them reach their goals, and that happens at the student level. And so, um, you know, we put a lot of time and energy into really trying to understand what students deal with, making sure that our software and our programs are aligned with that. Uh, to that end, uh, we've made an adaptive learning engine that really creates the most efficient pathway through content possible for students. Uh, we recently just won two awards. Uh, one was for uh, best adult learning technology and the other was for best uh, GED software. And so if you want to learn more about either of those awards, you can hit our website and learn about that. But we're really excited that people are recognizing uh, the innovation that we put into our software to help students be successful. The second thing is to make sure that content is accessible for everyone. And so we've put a ton of money into making sure that our uh, software is 508 compliant. Uh, if you want more information about that, just let us know. We've got a, a brand new VPAP we just wrote up so we can get you all the details on that. Uh, it's super important that students uh, have that accessibility and that it also, you know, protects you from liability uh, in that you're offering software that has, you know, done the work uh, to make sure that students with various disabilities can uh, access it. And of course, I think uh, July 26 was, um, uh, a national day of recognition for students with disabilities. And so, um, you know, that accessibility is, is important. And then the third thing is making sure that everything's mobile ready. You know, we need to work on any device, any time. Uh, even the way we structure our seats is important because it allows students to access the software anytime, any place. They're not gonna get kicked out if your seats are already full and, and other people are working on it and they can do it from any device. So when that, person has a few minutes to study, you know, after working a long day and finally getting their kids in bed, 
we want to make sure that they can access it from anywhere on any device and not be kicked off. And those are really important to us in making sure that students can meet their goals. Finally, I would just point to you, if you're not familiar with our software, um, these are a couple of quotes, one from a, a teacher at University of New Mexico, Next Steps Alliance, and um, one is from a student. Um, we have a Trustpilot site, so if you go on Trustpilot, which is a third party independent site where people can write in um, reviews of, of things like software and, and other things and just search uh, essential education. You'll see we have 762 reviews as of when we made this slide and uh, overall a 4.6 out of five, uh, you'll see that like 95% of those are, you know, four and fives. On there, and you'll see the, the the comments that people are making, students are making, about our program. Um, more than anything, we want them to be empowered to understand that they have great potential, and that um, this software can help them reach their goals. They, you know, it, it doesn't really matter where you start in this journey. <clears throat> it just matters that you keep going, and if you keep going, you can go as far as you want to. So we encourage you to come and see what students are saying and, and others are saying. You can go to our pastged.com slash reviews and see more student reviews. Um, but we thought that this would be an appropriate thing to mention as we're going into a, a session uh, really focused on students as learners and empowering them. So with that, James, I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks again for everything CoAve does for us and for the field. Great. Thanks so much, Dan. Uh, we really uh, are grateful for our partnership with Essential Education. Uh, we really couldn't offer these webinars to our members without your partnership. So thank you very much. And um, thank you for everything that you're doing in the world of adult education. It's, it's much appreciated. It's great work. Amen. All right. So today's presenter is Jessica Wobbler. She is our director of COAVE's Student Ambassador Program. Um, she spent the first decade of her adult education career working in DC as a program manager, teacher, volunteer coordinator, and more. While in DC, she was instrumental in founding the DC Adult and Family Literacy Coalition and still co-chairs its best practices committee. Now she coordinates our, the COAB Student Ambassador Program and works with multiple other organizations nationally to build empowering programs that help learners succeed. And it's our pleasure to have her on presenting on such a good topic today. Uh, if you could uh, say hello in the chat box, uh, tell us where you're calling in from today. If you have any questions, you can submit those in the Q&A box. And with that, I will hand it over to Jessica. Thank you. Thank you so much, James. I'm excited to have all of you here. Uh, I will be monitoring the chat as much as I can. And James already did a great introduction, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip this screen. And I would, like James said, like you to introduce yourselves in the chat box, but be careful because that little two menu, make sure it says to all panelists and attendees so everybody can see what you're saying and you can really kind of get into a conversation. So when you introduce yourself, what I'd like you to say is your name, your state, your relationship to adult education, what role you play, and then answer the question, what does student voice mean to you? And I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to do that. And while you all introduce yourselves, and again, make sure that your chat is going to all panelists and attendees, I'm gonna give you a little bit of an introduction to the ambassador program while we're thinking about what student voice means to us. So the instructions for the introduction are still at the bottom here, but I'm gonna go ahead and play this video while we do our introductions. Join COABE Student Ambassador Program, a nationwide movement of change makers, of leaders, of empowered adult learners working to make a difference. The award-winning Ambassador Training trains you and your program to be advocates for yourself, your community, and the field of adult education. The Ambassador Program has changed lives across the country and lifted learners into leadership positions where they can help their peers. But don't take my word for it. Let's hear from some voices from the field. Ambassadorship means inspiring, educating, advocating, legislating, 
on behalf of others with confidence. The Ambassador Program has helped our learners become leaders in our community. Our nationwide network works to change and improve policy and funding for adult education on all levels. The Ambassador Program has helped me by teaching me how to use my voice to make a greater impact on my community. We are working to get the Ambassador Program into every state and every program and to have every adult learner become an ambassador. Being an ambassador has changed my life because it has given me the confidence that I needed to advocate for myself, but also advocate for others. The ambassador training is offered in person and online, and the online version is free. For more information, go to COABE's website or email ambassadorcoordinator at coabe.org. To get started on the online training, go ahead and register. We look forward to advocating with you and improving adult education everywhere. All right, I am loving all of the input on what student voice means. I see student voice means helping students see their skills and experience as an asset, being proud of their stories. Student voice drives our work. Student voice means a lot in, and they should have a voice in their pro program, content, curriculum, how it's taught, how they learn. Student voices, feedback, advocacy, strength. Oh gosh, so many fantastic ideas. Yes, Kim, student voice means empowerment, being an advocate for themselves and others, being at the center of learning and decision-making. Oh, this is fabulous. Yes, yes to all of these. We're going to be talking a lot here about what student voice means to COABE, specifically COABE student ambassador. No. Okay, there we go. Didn't mean to start that again. So with COABE, student voice means agency, that students have agency in the decisions that they're making and that are being made about their lives. That they have community. Student voice is a huge part of building community. Student voice means leadership and empowerment. And student voice means ambassadorship. And we had Joyce, one of our ambassadors in that video, talk a little bit about what ambassadorship meant to her. And we're gonna really talk about what ambassadorship means in the context of this COABE student ambassador program. So let's get into the details. Our agenda for today, we can check off our welcome and introductions. Next, we're gonna go into the history of the ambassador training. We're gonna talk about the parts of the training itself and what the expectations are after you have taken the training. And then we'll try to sell it to you a little. I'll go over some of the benefits that are experienced by students, by teachers, by programs, by communities when people take part and participate in the ambassador program. And then I'll give you some details about how to join the movement. And it's been really exciting so far actually to see in the chat the names of some of our current ambassadors and the names of some folks that I've been talking to about potentially implementing the ambassador program. So I hope this webinar gives you the push you need to take that next step and register and get started with the ambassador program in your program and your state. So let's get started. The history of the ambassador program that actually started at Pima Community College in Arizona, and it was a very ground up student led movement at Pima Community College where they saw some areas for improvements and started advocating with the college itself and had some some wins where they got some new buildings built at Pima Community College and they decided well this advocating thing is really awesome. So let's bring it larger. So they started advocating with the government and it spread to other programs in Arizona and the Arizona Association for Lifelong Learning took it across the state. And so you had students and their program staff, their supporting staff, carpooling from all over the state to the state house to talk with the governor and to talk with local representatives and talking with federal representatives. And it fueled a series of advocacy efforts that led to success and policy in policy and funding. And at COABE, we were so fortunate to have some of the folks that were involved in starting 
the ambassador program, program at Pima, be part of our board of directors. And so they brought this to our attention and it's fantastic, we couldn't resist. So we adopted it in 2018 to build advocacy and empowerment nationwide and build a nationwide network of ambassadors who are making a difference for the field of adult education. So what is the training itself though? The ambassador training has four discrete parts. First part is awareness. And awareness is where we talk about what is adult education? Who are adult learners? Why is this important? We talk about all of those details to make sure that our ambassadors are fully informed, but then we also talk about how do we use this awareness of data and statistics, what are data and statistics, and how do we use them to help spread awareness. And we talk about how awareness is actually part of advocacy, just making people aware of an issue that they didn't know existed. So at COE, we actually have a lot of really excellent tools to help with this awareness piece. And we go through these in the ambassador training. One piece is on the Educate and Elevate website. And if you have not yet visited this website, I highly, highly recommend. I'm actually going to drop this in the chat here so you can go alongside me and take a look at your own state. I'm going to take a look at Ohio because I'm in Ohio right now. But this is a website where you can identify your state on this map. If you don't see your state, um, for example, if you're in the District of Columbia and it's a little too tiny, you can go to the drop down menu. Um, but you can click on your state. If I can click, there we go. You can click on your state and see this whole slew of excellent data fact sheets and data analysis. We have a COAB created data fact sheet. Um, it's from a few fiscal years ago, but it's still relevant and it gives your representatives or whoever you're talking to a general snapshot of what adult education looks like in your state and what the needs are. But we also have access to some data sheets from PIAC, the PIAC study. This one in particular will show your state in relation to other states in both literacy and numeracy. And then being a data nerd, I really love the PX skills map because, oh, go away, computer alert. You can go from county to county. So if you're talking to local representatives or your representative for your area on the federal level, you can really show them how your county, your area stacks up to other counties in your state. And then, and that can be really impactful. And if you click on it, it gives you even more information. And this just really goes to spread the awareness of what the reality is for adult education in your local area, in your region, your state, the country. And that these are things that people need to know. All right. Also on this Educate and Elevate website, you can see some state reports from the state itself. You can see some adult learner success stories and we are constantly encouraging more people to submit success stories to this website and we'll get to that a little bit later. But you know, when you meet with somebody to advocate, you may not have enough time to share your own story. So A, highly recommend writing your story down and we'll get to that in a bit. But you can also direct them this to this page so that they have a resource where they can read some more experiences from adult learners and see the data for themselves. It also has some examples of state innovations so that representatives know and that you know what's happening in the state. How are people doing it? How are people making a difference? And then some testimonials. So this is a, it's a really robust resource and we're always working on building it out. If you know of some success stories or innovations or testimonials or even fact sheets for your state, please let us know and we'll make sure that it's added here. So that's one tool. 
Another tool that we get to in terms of awareness is awareness of how to, of what, what's going on politically. Now for COABE, we are a national organization. So the updates that we talk about are going to be national updates based on our national campaigns. And so we do have a legislative update blog where we keep a running update of what's going on with our adult education campaigns. And we hope that as ambassadors, you will be participating in these campaigns with us. So this is another place where you can make sure that you are fully aware of everything that's going on in the political landscape as it pertains to adult education. And then we have some take action pieces. So once you are aware and want to make other people aware, this is a pretty simple way. You can click, fill in your information. It goes to a pre-written letter. You can edit it if you want, or you can just hit send. And that keeps us spreading awareness about the campaigns, about what is going on in adult education today. So these resources, we really encourage you to use. Um, I believe James has the PDF version of this PowerPoint with the links. So you should be able to get these links. Um, but they are all accessible from the COAB website as well. So I'll drop that one in the chat too. So that's awareness. So you can already see how robust and detailed the ambassador training is, even in just the first module. The second module though is really the shining star of the ambassador program. It's all about the student's story, your story. We work with potential ambassadors to write your story of adult education, how you came to adult education, what challenges you faced in your life that led you to adult education, uh, what successes you've had since joining adult education, what your goals are with your education, what are you going to do with it? What are you hoping to, what difference are you hoping to make in your community? We also talk a bit about representation. What, who does your story represent? Because we are working you know, to get everybody's story out there, but not everybody is in a position where they can share their story. You know, maybe their boss doesn't know they're in adult education or their family doesn't know and they don't want that put out there. And so when you tell your story, make sure you know this story doesn't just represent your experience. It represents many others experience of many others, whether you're a refugee or born in the United States or any other category of adult learner, your experience matters and it speaks for others. And then we talk about how to form your ask. When you're telling your story to others, what are you going to ask for? Maybe you're just going to ask that they keep adult education in their mind when they make decisions. Or maybe you're going to ask that they tell three people about adult education. Or maybe you're going to have a more specific ask about a, a particular piece of legislation that you want their action on. And that's going to change from situation to situation as you share your story. So this story, we write it during the training, but it's not a final draft. The story that we create in the training is your first draft and it's going to be edited as we move forward in the ambassador process and as you move forward as an ambassador. Now, of course, once you have your story written, the logical next step is to share it. And so we go through a lot of examples on how you can share your story. And traditionally, this has focused on public speaking, which we do absolutely still emphasize. But of course, as the world changes, we change with it. So we also talk a lot about digital storytelling and social media advocacy, email and letter writing and how public speaking works on Zoom, right? How to, how to have a meeting over Zoom and share your story over Zoom. So we've got a quick example of an ambassador in Arizona sharing her story with Tucson Councilwoman Regina Romero. So we're gonna take about a minute to watch this and see how this public, this example of sharing your story goes. Thank you. Well, we invite you to, um, because we like to share with you about, about 
about education. Uh, also, we'd like to know about you, let you know about us. We have a question from all the students. In, in the questions? Too? Absolutely. Hi, um, everybody. My name is Irene Salazar. I grew up in this neighborhood, and I'm also a returning student, GED student. Um, I'm going to tell you why adult education is important to me, and you know, sorry, <laughs> why it's important to me and my family. Um, I have two children. Um, I grew up a youngest of eight, and you know, my my family struggled, and my father was a contractor, and most of the time out of work. My mom two jobs, and um, so to me, I also want to provide my kids a better life and more of opportunities, you know, to them, things that I never had. And um, right now I'm in the process of buying a house through Chicago for La Casa. You know, thank God, thank you. And I just got the news um, in December that my job might be ending. So adult education is most important to me right now in order to save my job and my dream to provide a home for my kids and, you know, things for my kids that they're gonna need. And I look forward to, you know, providing that and attending college and with the help of adult education <coughs> and a real center and, you know, everything that it's become, you know, I thank you and other, you know, city council members for, you know, keeping that dream alive for a lot of, a lot of us here and why we're here tonight. Thank you. All right. So that's an example of what it looks like when an ambassador is sharing their story with a public official. Of course, as you just saw, a lot of times sharing your story takes the form of a formal meeting with a person who has influence. And we do talk about how that can be a public official, somebody in government, but it can also be a grant maker. It can be a donor. It can be a partner. It can be other people in your community. You know, don't limit yourself by only thinking that public officials are the ones with power because we know the truth. Our ambassadors have the power. The community has the power. And so sharing your story is a very broad spectrum. But of course, if you are going to meet with a legislator, COAVE has some resources for that. We have a toolkit where you can look up your legislator. You can just type in your zip code and find your, le your both legislators and folks on the executive branch on the national level for you. So for me in Ohio, for example, I can see I've got Joseph Biden, Kamala Harris, and then my senators, and then the representative for my region of Ohio, for my Ohio district. And when I click on one of them, I can see a lot of their information and when we talk about meeting with public officials, one of the things we talk about is finding a commonality so that they can relate to you. So knowing, doing research about the person you're meeting with is a crucial part of planning and implementing and facilitating that meeting. So you can really see, you know, maybe somebody in your group has military service. Maybe somebody in your group is Catholic. Maybe somebody in your group has children. Just finding a commonality can be really useful in a meeting so that they see you know, we're all people, we all have something in common. And then this page also has the contact information for their offices. It has what committees your representative is on. And so I can see that Wenstrup is on the Worker and Family Support Committee, which definitely dovetails into adult education. So again, I will pop this into the chat, but you should also be able to find the link um, in the slides when we're done here. So you contact your legislator, set up a meeting, and then we talk about how to actually conduct the meeting. We give a sample agenda and work through assigning different people in your team roles when you meet with your legislator. And what you say, we have some sample text. We want to make it as simple as possible, but also make it as authentic as possible. Right? So you will be editing and contributing your story and contributing questions that you want to ask this legislator as you work through the meeting agenda. 
And the purpose of the meeting, A, yes, of course, is to spread awareness and make a difference, but we really focus on the relationship building aspect of the meetings with people who have influence. Because if you start building a relationship, they'll remember you and they'll come back to you. And hopefully when they have a question about adult education, they'll think, well, I know somebody who's an authority on this. I know somebody who has experience with this and they'll call you up. And so we talk about that whole process of relationship building from that first touch to hopefully continuing the relationship beyond. Now, in most trainings, we do something called a fishbowl. And in this fishbowl, essentially, it is a practice meeting with a friendly local legislator, a friendly local official. We have done this with people from the Chamber of Commerce, with people from the Department of Education for a state, with an actual local representative, with a dean of a school. It really, you know, just somebody who is in a position of influence who knows you, knows a little bit about the program. And they come in and do a practice meeting where everybody has their roles, they tell their story, they ask the questions, they say their prepared remarks, and then they get feedback from the guest. And so it's a really good way to have a meeting, have that first meeting so that they are practiced and know the process. And so the process of the meeting itself is not intimidating, but they have it in a safe space. And so it's of course still a little nerve wracking, but it's important that the first time you're doing the meeting is not in an official meeting, right? With a public official that you're hoping to influence. You really want to practice as much as possible so that it's familiar, so that you know what you're doing and you're comfortable when the official meeting comes around. So I do have a video here. I'm going to, it's a little long, so I'm gonna save it till the end so I can make sure we get some questions, we can get some questions asked and answered in the process. All right, so the team roles. We encourage folks to implement the ambassador program in a team aspect. And so that means that it's not just one student by themselves, although of course it is available for folks that do want to go it alone. You know, we aren't gonna deny access to anybody, but our recommendation is that you and your programs form a team so that it's multiple people working towards the same goal so that you have that common goal, that common motivation that keeps you moving so that even if one person is having a bad day, the movement doesn't stop. And so we really encourage folks from the program like instructors, administrators, volunteers, other staff to also take the ambassador program and to form a team for advocacy, for moving forward in advocacy. And these teams don't necessarily have to be within one program too. We have a few states considering forming teams that are made up of you know, one student from this program, two students from this program, a teacher from this program. And if an individual program doesn't necessarily have the capacity to support a team, but has people who are interested, there are absolutely still options. And we have ways to support this as well, which we'll get to. So we have a short testimony video from one of our ambassadors here, Megan Lindsay, who I know is also here in this webinar. Um, so hi, Megan. So we're gonna watch Megan telling her story right here. Uh, my name is uh, Megan Lindsay. Um, again, thank you for having me. Um, I knew from kindergarten my first day that I was different from everyone else when they ran off to play with the toys that they'd earned their achievement and I couldn't finish my first assignment. And that was the first time that I experienced um, depression and anxiety as a child. And no child in fifth grade should know how that, or at five years old should know how that feels. Um, I was held back in first grade and I was pushed forward in second grade. And in third grade, I was the nice girl that they didn't understand. 
couldn't do better. And in fourth grade, I stopped being the nice girl and I became a bad girl. And um, luckily in sixth grade, um, I moved to a different school that assessed me and we found out I had dyslexia. And so they gave me a good strong foothold to get going, but I moved again and right back into another system that didn't know how to work with students with disabilities. And so I waited for the day that I turned 16 to push those doors open and walk out of my high school. I counted the days that it would be legal that I wouldn't get in trouble. And that caused me to have to move out of my mom's home and be 16 and take care of myself for the first time. So I got a job and I was the first um, supervisor at Hardy's to become a trainer before 18. And I became a manager without a high school diploma. Um, but then I ended up divorced in an abusive situation with three children and had to move to Iowa homeless. Um, and I had to start over again. Um, so I did, but somewhere along the lines, technology caught up with me and I couldn't find a better job um, that I was capable of doing now that I am permanently disabled. So I uh, went to Iowa Works to get some help with resume building and they sent me right to West Davenport Center to get my high school diploma where I did not want to be. Um, I was scared, scared of failure because that's all I'd ever done in the school systems growing up as an adult, mostly because they just didn't know how to teach me differently. Um, when I came to West Davenport Center, they had the tools to help me pick and choose the, the things that I needed to learn to take me to the next step that I was capable of doing. So in the fall of um, 2013, after three years of studying and surgery and treatments, I um, graduated and moved on to my associate's degree. Like many of our students, when we walk out of here, the feeling of earning your diploma is so fantastic. And when you hear somebody that doesn't have it, you just want to give them the same feelings. You want them to know how important it is that you did it. And so can they. And so that returns me to finish my associates in education. Um, in 2017, COAB nominated me as um, National Outstanding Student of the Year. And just like many of our students and the barriers that they overcome, my mom was having brain surgery for the second time while I was flying off to Florida to be celebrated. Uh, my first grandchild was in the NICU unit and my set of triplets grandchildren were being born in two months. And I was still trying to finish my last semester at, as an associate. After accomplishing that, I moved forward and I am now um, working to earn my bachelor's degree. I am one, um, just like Joyce, one of 2% in America that have gone forward to earn their bachelor's degree as high school equivalency students. And my whole goal is to change that number and make it grow and make it grow big. And I found the ambassador program to be a place where I could do that. And they gave me that voice to get rid of the anxiety and the hard times that I have. Um, over the years, I found out that I also suffer from um, dyscalculia as well as short-term memory disability. So that made math really difficult for me. Um, so in four months, I will graduate with honors um, for every semester I've been in my bachelor's degree. And I will return to be a math teacher here at West Davenport Center where I earned my high school equivalency diploma as well. Um, and I continue to be an ambassador locally that I've done for the last 10 years where now I am employed at the same program full time. I have insurance and I have my own home and my own car. And I have things that I've never known to have before because of getting an education. And I want people to know that it, even when you come in at the bottom with motivation, anyone can be um, successful if they truly want it. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Whew. I always, when I watch that and hear uh, the story, I always wonder how anybody could not be moved by that. And that's, you know, Megan is incredible. All 
of our adult learners are incredible. And hearing stories of adult learners is, is, is what's gonna move the, the needle in adult education policy and advocacy. And actually some, some good news from Megan that was actually recorded in a panel that Megan participated in at the COIB conference in the spring. And I believe she has since graduated. Um, and so congratulations, Megan. We are so honored to be able to work with you and our other incredible ambassadors. So once somebody has gone through the ambassador training, they join our network of ambassadors, which includes a lot of really exciting opportunities for advocacy. We at COABE sponsor a number of advocacy events like Capitol Hill Day, like National Adult Education and Family Week, which is coming everybody. So keep your eye out for some activities up there. We do letter writing campaigns like the one that I showed you earlier and some other activities to educate and elevate. And so we love to have our ambassadors participate in these. Our ambassadors are the stars of any advocacy activities that we undertake, particularly at Capitol Hill Day, which is the day or week, we had Capitol Hill Week this past year, when groups from every state are coordinated to meet with their state representatives, either at the US Capitol or even at their state Capitol. This past year, we did it over Zoom and over phone, and it still worked, and we still made those contacts and built those relationships. But we do this every year, sometimes twice a year. And we are really excited to have ambassadors participate in this because the story is what makes the impact. You know, the data and statistics, that's all good, and that's important to have, but the story is what makes it real. And we want people to make it, to, to see adult education as real and to support it. We also really hope that our ambassadors will network among local and state groups to advocate on the local and state level. You know, we have, COAB coordinates advocacy on the national level, but we know that's not the only level of government that has an impact on adult education. And so we really want ambassadors to work on all their levels. And I see Regina in the chat, data plus stories plus, plus relationships equals great advocacy. And that's the equation that we work from throughout the ambassador training. And like I said earlier, advocacy doesn't have to mean politics. It raise awareness with programs, with agencies, partners, community stakeholders, with your family, with your friends. You never know, you know who it is. You know, maybe you tell your friend about something and they tell a friend and they tell a friend and down the line, their friend knows Michelle Obama. Who knows, right? It can, it can be a lot, of, a lot of ways to make a difference. We also really encourage our ambassadors and anybody really to participate in our advocacy app. It's very simple to make an account. And once you make an account, you are put into a cohort with other ambassadors from your state and you can network and strategize, send messages, upload and share files, access other resources, and connect with other ambassadors from your area and grow your team and grow your impact. We also, of course, want you to publicize your activities. Like we said, awareness is advocacy. And we want you to make people aware of the ambassador program so that we can have more ambassadors and do more advocacy. So please send us your success stories, any photos, videos, recaps of successful meetings, campaigns, any other activities that you're undertaking as an ambassador. You can submit it on the Educate and Elevate website or you can just email it to me. That could be the simplest piece. And of course, tell others about the ambassador program. And here's where I sell you. I hope you've already seen some of the benefits for students. They develop leadership skills that transfer to other contexts. And we had a question earlier from Ruba that was, part of it was, are there tools to support learners in advocating for other topics important to them beyond adult education? And the answer is yes, absolutely yes. Our the advocacy, 
is a skill. Leadership is a skill. And there are lots of skills that go into those. And those transfer to multiple contexts. And we encourage people to advocate in fields beyond adult education. One of the greatest advocacy victories that um, my group of advocates in DC had was on public transportation, where they advocated for and received subsidies for adult learners who take public transportation. So they got a Metro card that had preloaded things that was renewed every month and it helped them to get to and from classes, which often was an onerous cost that was a barrier to a lot of folks. So you can really kind of develop skills that are transferable to multiple contexts, both advocacy, real life, and of course, standardized assessments as well. Um, the training is aligned to CASAS and CCRS standards. And we are happy to build an alignment matrix for any other standardized tests that you might be utilizing with your programs so that when you submit your lesson plans to your grantor and you're using the ambassador program, it's automatically aligned and you get credit for that. And students do well on the tests. Um, students plug into a national network, they get connections not just with people in power, but also with their peers and folks from other states who are in similar circumstances or who were in that circumstance, but like Megan are now college graduates and can be an inspiration to other ambassadors. They become empowered to improve their circumstances. And of course, for our ambassadors, we at COEB will absolutely write recommendation letters or provide references for you based on your service as an ambassador. And one thing that's really empowering for students as a big benefit is that you just you speak peer to peer with people in power and realize that you're the ones that have the power. And of course, we encourage all of our ambassadors to register as student members in COABE and that being a student member in COABE gets you some more benefits like free life insurance for a two year term and access to job postings. And so Regardless of whether or not you become an ambassador today, make sure that you and any adult learners that you're acquainted with become student members in COABE. Now some benefits for teachers. Of course, I already mentioned the aligned skills and the teachers get the credit for those skills that are being taught. So I'd take that, but also within the ambassador program, when you and your adult learners take the ambassador program together, you build really close ties and get to know them better and build that community bond. The training empowers learners outside the classroom, which leads to empowerment in the classroom and lear learners taking more leadership roles in the classroom, which is really exciting as a teacher myself. You know, that's what I love to see. And then, of course, the network is not just for learners, it's for everybody. And so teachers who, can, who participate in the ambassador program can tap into a national network of educators who have used this program and share ideas and implementation. And of course, you know, the ambassador training, one of my favorite things to do in my classroom was take students on field trips to City Hall and other places to testify themselves or to listen to testimony. And that's a really, really empowering thing to do. Some benefits for programs. Of course, your program, if you implement the ambassador training on a program level, or even just in a classroom, it's, it's infectious. You know, it's, you develop a sense of team and purpose across the board. You create a student and empowerment centered culture for your organization. You build your organization's stature and community. You're getting your organization's name out there. When people speak publicly, they start to hear about you. You develop and maintain relationships with people in power. You have their ear. So when your program needs funding, you can go to them. You make gains for policy and funding. So of course, that's the benefit that we're all looking for. 
But you also learn to utilize ambassadors and ambassador teams in multiple scenarios. We've had ambassadors speak at donor luncheons, at partnership meetings. You know, the goal is to make a difference for adult education and to raise the profile of adult education. And that can happen anywhere. And of course, if you send in your success stories to COABE, you get free publicity from us. We'll share your stories and make sure people know what, what exciting innovations are happening at your program. And then of course, you know, we have the ripple effect. When members of a community are empowered, the community is empowered. And like I mentioned to Ruba, the advocacy skills are transferable. Ambassadors go on to testify in other public realms. And you can leverage your skills as an ambassador to form advocacy partnerships with other organizations or coalitions to advocate for needs like housing, childcare, et cetera. And of course, we also have some general benefits. Uh, we do have incentives like raffles and conference discounts. We track ambassador actions and then give out raffles periodically to ambassadors or ambassador team members just to reward them and say thank you for being so awesome. Of course, we have continuing support from COABE. We provide coaching and resources for any of your advocacy events, for your programming, for teaching. You know, how do you create a culture of leadership? How do you integrate the ambassador program training into your program? How do you develop leadership roles? And we're here to support you. I'm here to support you. And we are, that's one of the things we're so excited about. So if you are the only person from your program on this webinar and you're energized by this, and you go back and talk to your team, bring me with you. I'm more than happy to set up a meeting with your team and walk, I walk them through this webinar or answer questions or show them videos and testimonies. You know, whatever you need me for, I am here. So the training options. We sometimes will offer the training at the COAB conference as a pre-session we also this past year offered kind of piecemeal as individual sessions. We had a session about storytelling. We had a student ambassador session so that people get a taste of it and then come back for more. We will also do live or Zoom facilitated training for states or programs. And another of Ruba's questions earlier was about, has this been used with ELLs? And the answer is yes. And depending on the level, it probably needs to be facilitated by a teacher or by a COABE um, facilitator. We have a number of experienced facilitators um, that work with COABE to deliver this to folks from a wide variety of backgrounds. Um, the online training is created to be delivered at an NRS3 level if it is being delivered independently. So if somebody is just taking it independently um, on their own recognizance, they'll need to be at about an NRS3 level to really make it through and, and get all the information from it. But this training has been delivered in a facilitated way down to a very basic literacy level. And because everybody has a story that they can tell, and we don't want to limit that. And regardless of your level, your story needs to be heard. Your voice is important. And so we want to make sure that this training can be facilitated to anyone who is interested. Now I see a question from Sierra about how this is delivered. And I may have just answered this, but she asks, do individual students always take the training directly through CoWave? And no, not necessarily. We have state associations who deliver the training across states. We have programs who are implementing the training in their program in a number of different ways. You know, we have one program that's doing it in their orientation. We have one program that's doing it in a writing class, one program that's doing it in a civics class. We have another program that's doing it as an extracurricular. You know, so some programs will do it as a class and everybody does it as a class. Some programs do it where it's optional. And so you can definitely use the online modules for that. 
And we're working on building out a script so that teachers can use a script in PowerPoint to deliver the training as well, if they don't want to use the online modules or don't have access to uh, internet as regularly. So we are up at the end. We have about four minutes left, so I don't think I'm going to get to that second video, but we really have gone through a lot of information. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm scrolling back through to see if I missed any, and I did. Um, from Vicki, how do you generate enough interest and motivation for students to do this when they are learning their basic skills, maybe learning the language, raising their children, etc.? This takes energy and time, ideas. That's a great question. And really, you know, implementation, we tried to make this as flexible as possible so that you can implement it depending on your students' needs and circumstances. So you may decide that maybe this is something that is optional, you know, only if students have the capacity for it. That's perfectly fine. Or you can integrate it in a class. And what I've found is that when you have a group doing it together, the motivation comes. And particularly if you're talking about like, what do you want to see changed? What do you want to do in your community? And people have those goals. They do, even if they haven't said them out loud before. Everybody has something that they want to see changed, some injustice that they want to address or some need that they have. And so that is often a really good entryway into talking about advocacy. And you can also you know, enter it from an academic perspective. This, this training has a lot of academic elements, particularly when writing and reading the stories, that's, that's writing, <laughs> that's, it's, it's big. And using their language skills to tell that story in whatever way they can. You know, and if, if their English is not necessarily there quite yet, they can enter into it using the digital storytelling aspect where they're using images and symbols to help portray the story. So it really, you know, I've found a lot of success with doing it with groups who are working together and then that motivation builds. And then even if it's a small group and they come back and they're excited, you know, they testified, they talk to the mayor, they talk to whoever, and other students are looking at them like, oh, well, I wanna try that. Let me try that. And so it builds, it really does build. And yes, just to emphasize what Regina said, invite me to your program. I'll build the excitement. I absolutely will. So please, you know, if you have any questions, I'm going to drop my email address into the chat box as well. And it's also on the screen and on the PDF. Please email me. Let me know if you have any questions, if you want to jump on another phone call just to get a more individualized view of how this would work for you. I'm here. That's what I'm here for. But thank you all so much for coming. Please spread the word. I think the recording of this webinar will be uploaded. So if somebody missed it, they should be able to access it. And I believe, yes, James, are you there? Will slides be emailed? I'm here, yes. The, uh, the webinar presentation along with all your materials will be posted to coave.org within about 48 hours of this. Excellent. Thank you, James. Thank you all so much. We're really excited to work with you and to spread student leadership and empowerment everywhere. Jessica, you did such a great job. That was an awesome presentation. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Thank um, you very I, much. I want to thank Dan. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, just thank you. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> I want to thank Dan at Essential Education again. I thank you for their support. And um, again, without without their partnership, we wouldn't be able to to put these webinars on. Um, so thank you. Thank you for everybody for joining us today. If you could just take a minute to fill out the webinar poll that popped up a, a minute ago. I hope everybody has a great day and a great rest of the week. Thank you very much. Take care.